Hey dudes, and welcome to the Leftover Culture Review, and welcome to this very special form of torture that I have created just for me, just for myself, and I continue to carry it out. A couple of years ago, I picked up Sega's very own Art Alive, developed in 1991 as like the MS Paint answer to developing your own artwork on a Sega Mega Drive. And I had this idea to do a whole series of artworks using nothing but a Sega. So that's kind of what I've been doing. I have been recording myself pulling together a few pieces of art using a Sega Mega Drive. And they'll all be available over on the Leftover Culture Review not the Leftover Culture Review, just they'll all be available on leftovercultureview.com for you to check out, see how they came together and just appreciate, I guess. Um, this has not been an easy endeavor. It has been slow and laborious and kind of torturous, but um, I've really enjoyed having like a stripped back art application to check out. Uh, I feel like, you know, in 2022, uh, we are very spoiled for choice when it comes to using and making our own art and doing our own things. And I thought, what would it be like to go back to 1991 um, when this was kind of like an option to create digital art? And I've said it before, but a pen and paper would be a hell of a lot easier. Anything with a mouse would be a hell of a lot easier than a control pad. But what we do have um, that the PC users at the time didn't is uh, a fantastic arrow and circle tool, which I have been using extensively. And if you've seen any of the other episodes, you have definitely watched me slowly move a cursor around a screen, making little lines as I go. Actually, I, I always use the biggest width. Um, again, I just think that if you're gonna put a line down, you gotta be confident about it, which sounds great in theory, but there are so many of these episodes that I've started and I've stopped and I've deleted because they just have not turned out the way I wanted to, but I always live in hope that this piece will look better than the last piece and so on and so forth. So definitely let me know in the comments if you've had any favorites so far. I would love to know that you've actually been watching and enjoying some of these Art Alive videos because um, the videos are kind of just a byproduct. Like I was going to make a series of art regardless. Um, obviously I would love it. Obviously, I. I would love it if you watched the videos, but I also like the fact that I can record the pictures and the illustrations and the artworks actually coming together um, because that's that's kind of cool. Um, in the last episode, I did some abstract food. Um, it started off as like a Western scene, which I turned into bacon and eggs, and it got me thinking about food in general. And then it got me thinking about... When I was a kid, I remember seeing like this fishbone pattern like a lot. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what company sort of was running with it at the time or what logo or branding it was, or was it just a generic fish skeleton? I don't know, but there was something that kind of stuck with me about the skeleton of a fish just being like kind of spiny and um, not super tasty looking. Um, and I've wanted, to, I've tried to draw a few different skeletons in Art Alive, but I haven't had a whole lot of luck, mostly because I'm running out of space. Um, every time I like try and use Art Alive, um, the composition part is really hard to nail because you can't really do like preliminary sketches. You can't sort of like, um, work out how you want the picture to look and, and Maybe there's definitely more talented artists out there who know what their composition's gonna look like as they start and could probably use an application like Art Alive quite easily because they know what they're going for and they have a very clear idea and a vision in their mind, but that is not what we're doing here today. 
I had an idea to do a fish skeleton and I'm rolling with it. And if it turns out fantastic, and if it doesn't, this episode never existed. You are never going to see it. Um, but I think we're off to a pretty solid start. Like we're not doing anything too complicated here for this piece. I really just wanted to, um, like I said, create a collection of art designed in Sega's Art Alive. And I kind of, yeah, just thought a fish skeleton would be really cool. Um, especially because it's nostalgic for me. Um, seeing them everywhere, not knowing exactly what they meant, but I definitely wanted one. Um, and that's why I do all this, is nostalgia. It's all about trying to recapture this piece of my past, which was simple and easy and just... You're in it because it's fun. You're not doing it because it's... Um, I don't know, like... It's not work, it's not a job. Everything that we're sort of doing here is for the fun of it. There's no... There's no real stakes at play. Um, and a lot of a lot of the art and a lot of the stuff that I create is about capturing that sense of nostalgia for me as well. The same as having this games room. Nostalgia is an incredibly powerful feeling for me. Um, I don't really have uh, the ability to empathize with people. I can't feel sad if someone feels sad. I can't feel happy if someone feels happy. I'm, I like to think I'm pretty neutral in, in that respect. If someone's, you know, I, I'm never malicious. I don't like wish bad things to happen to people. I don't, um, I don't really get that sense of schadenfreude where you take delight in other people's misfortune. But on the flip side to that, I don't really take delight in their wins either. I um, very much try and stick in my lane. But one way that I have found that I really enjoy connecting with people is through nostalgia. Which is probably why um, the Leftover Culture Review has been so good for me. Because it's nothing but nostalgia all the time. Um... And that is kind of the inspiration behind this picture here. It's obviously a fish skeleton to anyone who looks at it. But for me, it is capturing a feeling of nostalgia that I had and that I really wanted to share with you guys as well. So obviously the, uh, the big benefit with digital art is the option to be able to like change colors and to just paint bucket whole areas. Um, I wonder what color I want my skeleton to be. Do I go white? Maybe the background should be like a dark blue. And then I can use like a light blue to create highlights within the skeleton. Now we're going to wait for the paint bucket tool. Um, it is really kind of mesmerizing just watching the paint bucket tool slowly fill in all those gaps. And then what I can do now is use a lighter blue to continue sort of like the um, the detail within the skeleton itself. So for anyone who's been watching these videos, you might know that Art Alive really just gives you 16 colors at a time to play with. Um, just another one of those fantastic limitations. But one of the first things that I really learned in art class was if you've got like unlimited reign to do whatever you want, the, the decision and the choices that you need to make can feel particularly paralyzing. But when you're using a, a program like Sega's Art Alive, you don't really have that many options already. You are already starting with a limited set of tools, a limited set of colors, and a limited set of screen resolution. And obviously you're trying to do all the art using a Mega Drive controller. So 
In terms of um, limitations, this game is full of them. And if you are feeling confident and cocky, uh, definitely give it a crack and see what you can come up with because it's definitely a, it, it's a lot harder than it looks. Um, but I have to admit that at the very end of the process, I've really enjoyed seeing some of the results. Some of the pictures have turned out so much better than I could have ever anticipated. And I think like a part of that is just because there is so many um, limitations, but also so many unknowns as well. Like when you start the picture, you can have an idea of what you want to do, but it's never going to turn out the way you expect it. It's always going to be um, different. You're going to have to adapt and make compromises as you create your artworks. And that's definitely a part of the process that I've really enjoyed is just having to adapt and things not working out exactly as you planned. But at the end of this process, um, there is no way to save what you do. Everything just goes, um, everything just gets deleted. That's kind of like the nature of using something like Sega's Art Alive. So one thought I did have for our little fishy friend here was that he could be sitting at the very top of a trash can, um, discarded, disused. Um, I do have like, I talked about food already, but, um, in the last, in the last, um, episode I did where I did my Western also, um, breakfast scene I talked about how much I love drawing food uh the textures like w when you draw a burger and you've got the bun on top and all the different fillings um but I, I also love drawing pizza <laughs> I don't know there's something about food that's really fun to draw and maybe just because it's so recognizable but I'm kind of going a different route for this one where like obviously a trash can's not like instantly recognizable, but it's kind of where the food ends up. So I guess we'll see how this goes. Again, I've only got a couple of different colors to play with and I need to try and make the rubbish look a little bit more um, rubbishy. I thought I would start with some I don't know, tomatoey sort of colors, especially if it was coming out of like a restaurant or something. There's like the lid of the bin. And we'll give the bin some lines as well. And in the last episode, I also talked a lot about color, like the real benefit of doing digital art is that you can change colors, you can use the paint bucket, you can drop different things in. If you don't like the way something's looking, um, you can just color over the top of it. It's not really something you could do with like pen and paper. So again, trying to use some of the, the benefits of having a digital art program like Sega's Art Alive to to make this stuff in. Um, for all its limitations, yeah, you still have the opportunity to color over the top of things. And obviously similar to like MS Paint, you don't have, especially the early versions of MS Paint, I don't know if the new one has layers, but you don't have layers in this. Essentially, you're just painting on the one canvas over the top of the same thing over and over again. So maybe one of the trash items could be a fish hook. Man, just if I could draw those tight little circles when I was trying to do my flies before. Um, and for you keen viewers out there, you may notice that I have been wearing the exact same outfit for three episodes in a row. And that's because I have got one free night where I had 
the opportunity to just come down into my space, into the games room here and do some drawing. So I am making the most of it and I am trying to get as, it's not that I'm trying to rush through these pictures. I'm just, um, I'm using the free time I have to do a little bit of art. Um, and if that means doing three episodes in one night, uh, so be it because Because if I don't leap on my opportunities, I might not get them again for a little while. So, um, yes, making the most of a Friday night right here. What I might do is continue to work on this clutter in the bin and the bits of trash and come back once I've got the picture in a better state. So hang tight dudes, after this, the reveal. So guys, I am ready for the grand reveal, which is why my hand is up because I'm trying to cover the screen, but it's out of focus anyway. So um, there you have it. It is a fish skeleton sitting on top of a pile of trash. And I absolutely broke my own rule with this one. I kind of only wanted to spend about an hour on each piece, but this one took a fair bit longer. There's a lot of details. It was a very finicky piece to actually finish, but I'm dedicated to finishing them all in one sitting. And tonight's been a big one. There's been three pieces done just because I had the time to do it, but it's well past my bedtime. So I really do appreciate that you guys hung around for this. Um, like I said, these pieces, all of the Sega Art Alive drawings, illustrations and artwork done on a Sega Mega Drive will be available on leftoverculturereview.com to check out, see the processes, and I'm also going to start adding them into the store so you can own your very own piece of originally designed artwork done on a Sega Mega Drive. Really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much for all the support. Um, and if you want to play along at home, I'd absolutely love to see some of your stuff. Hit me up on my social media. Sorry, it's a bit chilly. I'm not folding my arms to be rude. Um, hit me up on my social media. So you can find Leftover Culture Review on Facebook. You can also find me on Instagram, where I'm probably more active than anywhere else. Um, and that is leftover underscore culture underscore review. And I will leave the links, you know, down below. They'll be on the website. I don't know. You can find me. I trust you guys. You're smart. You're intelligent. You're switched on and you know how to navigate the internet. So definitely hit me up, check out the website and stay tuned for some more leftover culture. Cheers, guys. Thank <laughs> you.